Windows 8 was one of the many failures by Microsoft, mostly because of <laughs> But believe it or not, there is still a good amount of people using this OS to this day including me. So why am I still using this so-called failed operating system by Microsoft eight years later? Well, obviously it's because I have zero IQ. So thanks for watching everyone. Click here if you want to see my other video. Okay, obviously it's much more deep than that, but I think it's important to note what kind of device I'm running this OS on because really the device you run Windows 8.1 on is fundamental to whether or not it's good. So no, I'm not running this OS on my desktop computer. That one is running Windows 7. I'm running Windows 8.1 on Microsoft's own offering the Surface Pro 3. So unlike say desktop computers, the Surface Pro 3 feels like it's built entirely around Windows 8.1. You can use it as a tablet and a computer, not just as a computer, which Windows 8.1 was going for, as a convenient shortcut to the start screen with the Windows button on the side, which when you think about it actually makes the start screen function as a home screen in iOS, and it has a touch screen, allowing the device to take advantage of the touch-oriented gestures in Windows 8.1, plus pen support, which desktop computers just don't even support, at least for the most part. But believe it or not, the device still functions like a Windows laptop that can run x86 programs. And that's what I love about this device, is that it's literally a tablet and a laptop, and I'm pretty sure this is what Windows 8.1 was going for. But it was also going for the previously mentioned gestures, and when I say gestures, I mean a lot of gestures, and the Surface Pro 3 takes advantage of pretty much every single one that Windows 8.1 is built in with, and it honestly puts the keyboard and mouse alternatives to shame. It's seriously embarrassing when you start taking a look at it. When you're opening the charms bar with your finger, you truly feel like you're pulling the charms bar out, rather than with a keyboard and mouse where you're moving your cursor all the way to the corner and moving it back down to open it. That doesn't feel intuitive, the way you do it with the keyboard and mouse just doesn't feel as natural as using it with a finger. Same with the lock screen, swiping up on the lock screen feels a lot more natural than clicking and dragging up with the mouse, it seriously just doesn't feel right. This concept of touch feeling much more natural than a keyboard and mouse applies to pretty much every single system animation, including closing apps, multitasking, snapping apps, customizing the home screen with pinch gestures, and even something as simple as scrolling through the home screen using your finger feels much better than scrolling with your scroll wheel or pulling on the scroll bar. Once you start using Windows 8.1 and take advantage of the gestures with the right kind of device, it's really hard to go back. I still do appreciate the option to use the gestures with a keyboard and mouse, I just don't think it should be the only way to use them. Aside from gestures though, the UI for April 1 looks a lot more touch oriented in general, and it's especially apparent when looking at the sizes of the live tiles. It makes a whole lot of sense from a tablet user's perspective, because our fingers are just not as accurate as using a mouse and keyboard. Like if you're using Windows 7 on a tablet, it'd be really hard to use that device because tapping on everything would be a lot harder due to the icons being much smaller and close together. So naturally we need bigger icon sizes in 8.1 to tap on everything properly, at least if you're using a touchscreen device. Same idea goes for full screen apps. Using them makes sense on a tablet, but on desktop computers it just doesn't make too much sense. I just can't see in many cases where it's too useful. So that's a brief overview of why the Surface Pro 3 is a critical part to my Windows 8.1 experience, but some may be asking why I just don't upgrade to Windows 10 which has a tablet mode built into it, and well, there are multiple reasons. So turning on tablet mode in Windows 10, this looks hideous. Okay, so this is the start screen, and first impressions aren't too great. There's just a lot going on here, like why are there so many buttons and shortcuts on the sidebar to the left, and why is the taskbar permanently on the bottom of the screen? I understand there needs to be some shortcuts for ease of use, but like, does a shortcut to settings always need to be on the sidebar when I can just pin it to the start screen? Also, the taskbar being permanently on the start screen and on other apps really just takes away from the benefits of full screen apps, because... Really, they aren't full screen apps anymore if there's a taskbar locked onto the bottom of the screen. It's literally the same as maximizing a window in Windows 7. Okay, but aside from looks, how is the functionality? And well, not too great. Many of the gestures in Windows 10 have been modified, but they just don't feel as intuitive as they were in Windows 8.1. For example, instead of sliding your finger to the all apps list in Windows 8.1, Windows 10 decided to go for hamburger menus on the top left. Yeah, flattering. I don't really like this, it kind of makes this feel like a tappy, pushy, clunky UI that just doesn't feel that natural. There's also multitasking, when I slide my finger from the left to multitask, I'm expecting an animation from the left to occur, but instead for some reason sliding my finger from the left zooms everything out. In 8.1 this gesture had an app come out from the left of the screen, you're actually holding something, there's a relationship between your finger and the device, you're controlling the gesture. 
In Windows 10, it just doesn't feel like my finger and the device are really working together. It's more of a command rather than a gesture I can control. And this applies to a bunch of other animations in tablet mode as well, not just this one. I might be nitpicking, but for me, a lot of the gestures just doesn't feel as natural as it was in Windows 8.1. In fact, many of the gestures in this new tablet mode have been completely removed. You can't swipe to other menus, you can't pinch out the zoom, you can't do anything. Seriously, what advantages does this new tablet mode have? I can't think of a single good reason why I'd prefer this over this. Also, this is a small one, but the only customization you have over the tablet mode in Windows 10 is the background and the accent color. That's it. That's seriously. That's all you have: the background and the accent color. In 8.1, you could pick a different background for the start screen, separate from the desktop wallpaper, and some had many cool effects when you scroll. And the overall UI was much more colorful and vibrant. In general, tablet mode is just very plain, boring, and simple in Windows 10. It doesn't even have somewhat unique animations when you're opening apps. It's just a fade animation. In Windows 8.1, when opening apps, animations were more active and everything was like flipping around. It felt so alive. In Windows 10, not so much. Since Windows 10's release, the tablet UI has gone through like only one change since its introduction, so this really proves the point that Microsoft just doesn't seem all too interested in improving tablet mode in the near future, and I wouldn't be surprised if they removed it either. So yeah, Windows 8.1 is virtually better in every regard when it comes to its tablet UI, and I just don't see any reason why I need to transition to Windows 10 when its tablet mode is just a downgrade overall. Aside from tablet mode though, the combination of touch and desktop in one OS is in my opinion handled much better in Windows 8.1. Why? Well, let's look at it this way. Let's say I want to use Windows 8.1 purely as a desktop machine. What I do is I launch the desktop app from the start screen, and this entire UI will open applications specifically for the desktop, such as the control panel, the Win32 calculator, the desktop version of Internet Explorer. But let's say I want to use Windows 8.1 purely as a tablet instead. Well, now I can take off the type cover on my Surface Pro, and now I can go to the start screen, and here I can use apps that are specifically designed for touch. So for example, I'll be more encouraged to use the Windows Settings app rather than the Control Panel, or the App version of the calculator rather than the Win32 calculator, or the mobile version of Internet Explorer rather than the desktop version, and so on. Both UIs are much more separated in Windows 8.1, which I actually found as an advantage because it just doesn't disrupt one UI from another. Plus, you're still able to use the touchscreen and the desktop UI if you want to. Contrastingly, Windows 10 tries to combine both the touch and desktop UI instead of separating them, and it's mostly hit or miss. When it works, it really works. When it doesn't work, it really doesn't work. So yeah, for me, I just like the separation concept in Windows 8.1 much better than the combining concept in Windows 10. Of course, there's also the usual Windows 10 quirks, like the lack of theming, terrible quality feature updates, less stable and smooth than its predecessors, and all of that. And just as a final point to both touch and desktop users, Windows 8.1 had a plethora of other really useful features, such as the redesigned task manager, fastboot, built-in Windows Defender, Microsoft account integration for those who liked it, the lock screen, which in my case I actually found as a benefit, and the Windows Store. Yeah, I actually use the Windows Store, I know I'm weird. So despite the failure that Windows 8 was, we should all appreciate the effort Microsoft made and their approach. And if you're that right type of user, Windows 8 may have served you really well, and seeing as I was that right type of user, Windows 8.1 served and will keep serving me really well.